Hi, and happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to a lesson on output formatting in Python. First, we're going to assign the value 3.1415926 to a variable pi. We'll talk all about variables and assignments in a future lesson. Output formatting allows us to place values from variables in output statements, and it allows us to change things such as the width of the field that they're printed in, fill in blank spaces with other characters, set digits of precision past the decimal, and so forth. So we know right away if we say pi inside of the parentheses, it's simply going to print the value as we had, 3.1415926. However, output formatting, such as you see here, allows us to insert the value of the variable pi into the string. Now in this example, you really don't see any benefit to doing that, but if you bear with me, you'll see why we're doing this in a few moments. So first thing you'll notice is that it actually truncates the precision and rounds to the value 3 instead of 2, 6. That's interesting, but we can actually control exactly what kind of rounding it does. Another benefit of doing this is that we can have both text and string values without having to do any kind of typecasting and run into mysterious errors. So in this example, you see the string prints out text right next to the floating point value. You can also use a string template in a variable. So in this case, we're assigning the string pi colon space percent f to the variable output. Then we're printing the variable output and then the percent and the value or variable that we want to insert into the template. And this works exactly as we'd expect it to, just like the previous example. Now, let's talk about formatting. You've seen that the percent sign does two things. First, inside of the string, it tells us that here is a template position. Outside of the string, it tells us that we're going to be inserting this value into this template. By the way, it's called the modulo operator. So within the template, the percent tells us that there is a template value being filled in, and f tells us that it's a floating point value. In this example, 0.2 is going to give us two places past the decimal point. This example shows that same 0.2, but it also has a 6 before the decimal. It's kind of interesting in this case because 6 refers to the number of places in the output field, and the 0.2 does exactly the same thing, says keep two places past the decimal. So if you could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places for this value to be output. And notice that it just fills in blank spots, spaces on the left hand side of the field and it justifies the numeric value to the right hand side of the field. We can change that by putting a value before the field width. That zero is what's going to fill in in those empty spaces. So now once again it's easier to count that the field in fact does take up six spots, 003.14, and the blank spots are filled in with zeros. In this example we see that you can have multiple variables in a template. The i in this case stands for integer, and as you can see past the modulo, all three variables, all three values rather, are integer. Another thing to note is you see this escape character right here, because we want to have a quote within our uh, string, and it's just going to fill them in respectively. 16 would go in the first field, 5 in the second, and 10 in the third. The 
The actual format for templating variables in output is the percent sign, then whatever flags you want, then the width of the field, if you want to have digits of precision plus the decimal place, and then finally the type. The types you're allowed to have are listed here. Decimal, octal, hexadecimal, floating point in exponential format, floating point in decimal format, and so forth. What you see in this example is that the three values are listed inside of parentheses and not just listed alone. If you remove the parentheses, you're going to get an error. What we have here is actually called a tuple. We'll learn more about tuples in the future, but basically a tuple is just values separated by commas within parentheses. It's a lot like a list, but not with all of the same properties. In fact, you could use a tuple when you only have a single value, and when in doubt, you could always do that. The only thing is a one value tuple just makes a whole bunch of parentheses. But it works just like it would without it. Thanks a lot. Hope you learned a lot today. And remember to check over at brainstemschool.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the Quick Start ebook. Make sure and make some comments on the blog posts. And have a great Thanksgiving.